So I have sad news today. So it's been announced that Van Lee, a division of Tiffin, basically the fifth wheel division, is going to be shutting its doors by March of this year. That is actually really sad. I had a very special relationship with the folks from Van Lee with the fact that they actually allowed me to review one of their Beacon, which is one of their premium fifth wheels, for six months. And I'll tell you, I was really impressed overall with the craftsmanship, the quality, and a lot of the features and details that they put into those fifth wheels. So let's take a moment and talk about this and talk about a few reasons as to why the brand may be shutting its doors. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have to tell you, I'm pretty surprised, honestly, that Van Lee is going out of business. I was a little surprised because once Tiffin was acquired by Thor, I actually thought they may move the brand to the Indiana area or they may expand the brand into additional lines, including travel trailers and a few toy haulers, which is, again, kind of surprising because they had recently announced a new toy hauler that was coming to the market. So when you see a brand just suddenly make an announcement that they're shutting down, typically means that they've known this has been coming for a while, but they had to kind of get all their ducks in a row to be able to fulfill certain contractual obligations, as well as existing customer orders or production requirements for dealerships that perhaps needed certain inventory and were agreed to have inventory delivered by a certain time frame. It's actually really sad to see this occur because... When we had the six-month loaner, which was a Beacon, it was a 42 RDB, it was really a beautiful RV. There was a lot of areas where you just saw fit and finish details that you typically don't see in the rest of the industry. And even if you do see it in the rest of the industry, you see it in a different way. So when we had that unit, it was really exciting to have a unit that had extremely residential furniture, extremely residential cabinetry, and little touches that, again, you just don't typically see in RVs in any budget. Um, the specific one you're seeing playing right now is another unit that I filmed at a dealership recently, and it's just a basic walkthrough of a Van Lee Beacon that was very similar to the one that we actually reviewed, but with a slightly different floor plan. One of my guesses as to why the brand is being discontinued is partially the fact that it's located so far outside of Indiana and the supply chain of RV equipment and accessories and frames and components that go into building an RV. And when you're that far away, that means everything needs to be shipped to you, including frames and other components. And it can certainly drive the cost of RV development up, um, maybe even to the point to where it's just not profitable anymore. I think something else that definitely drove up cost was the fact that they had kind of a different level of service to help manage the customer experience when people bought a Van Lee product. They wanted customers to feel as if they were incredibly well taken care of. And oftentimes that meant dispatching technicians out to a location to fix people's units or spending extra money to accommodate folks who are having problems. And that isn't necessarily seen very often in the general RV market. Sure, there are some premium brands out there that will do things similar to that, but for the most part, you know, you have to kind of treat your broken RV or problems with your RV like a car dealership. You have to take it to them, leave it with them for an unknown amount of time, and then hope that it's going to come back to you repaired or at least the problems lessened whenever you get it back. So, yeah, whenever you uh, you differentiate your brand, especially from a post-sale support scenario, you absolutely can can run into cost prohibitive things that can drive the margins down after the sale is over. But overall, I can tell you that, that this is truly a sad day for the RV world because the folks at Van Lee were trying to do things that were very different than what many other RV manufacturers were doing. They were trying to address issues that other RVs often came with or other RVs often developed um, before they developed. They were putting in better sidewalls, better floors, better plumbing. Um, they were doing things that were different that actually made people have a better overall experience when owning an RV. So again, it is sad to see the brand shut its doors. It's really sad to see, you know, the brand now on RV dealership parking lots knowing that it's essentially going to be a unit that's not going to have any post-care sales support. I don't think it's any surprise that RV sales have been declining over the past several months. You know, RV sales skyrocketed during COVID when everyone was trying to get out. They were trying to start exploring the country in their own little living environment 
environment. But again, over the past, you know, three to eight months, roughly, the RV market has absolutely declined. Sales have gone down and it's becoming even more difficult to build an affordable RV, but to sell it at an affordable price. And if you're outside of that that Indiana area where all the RVs are generally manufactured, or at least the vast majority of them are, then you are really far away from a lot of components that RVs need to really be a successfully developed unit, such as Dometic products or Furion products or axles and things that that are developed by larger companies like Lippert. And, you know, even if you develop your own frame or you have some of the components, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to be able to avoid using other components components that having them shipped to you, having them supplied to you may be challenging if you're not in that centralized Indiana hub of RV development. You know, I've explained in videos in the past that a lot of people have this misconception that the RV industry has just been price gouging people and been inflating the prices of RVs just to earn record profits. And in many cases, that may have been very true, but it doesn't necessarily mean that whatever profits that they earned during the peak of COVID equated to a company that was going to remain profitable as RV sales declined. Even though manufacturer retail pricing of RVs is still astronomically higher than it's ever been, again, the the actual cost to develop RVs, the cost to get the components, everything has gone up significantly to where, you know, it's almost cost prohibitive to build an RV and try to sell it for a super affordable price because you just won't have any margins. You won't have the ability to transport the RV where it needs to go. You won't have the ability to compensate the dealers or to have the appropriate amount of markup built into it to make sure that everyone who is involved in the sales process is being compensated. And this holds true even more for luxury brands, brands that have a higher MSRP than the norm, brands that have an expectation of certain craftsmanship, certain quality, certain cabinetry, certain features, certain levels of being overbuilt. And when those brands start to have reduced sales and you start seeing that supply chain issues, component issues, all of this stuff impacts their bottom line even more, you can see them go out of business. And this is not just Van Lee Beacon. This is brands that go back several decades that were really well-known brands that people said, you know what, they built a phenomenal coach. They built a phenomenal RV. And whatever happened to them? Well, this is kind of the perfect storm in terms of an example of what can happen to a relatively successful RV brand that's even owned by an even more successful parent company finding itself in a scenario where their luxury product doesn't have as many buyers as it needs, is selling at a premium, has supply chain issues getting the components, while interest rates are skyrocketing, making it very difficult for people to be able to actually go out and get a loan to buy their units. So when you run into these scenarios, you know, you have to make the decision of whether or not your brand can survive. And there were probably things that the folks at Van Lee may have been able to convince the folks at Thor to allow them to do to try to continue operations, but those things would have likely diminished the brand significantly because it would have turned a premium unit into a entry-level unit just so they could bring the cost down to an area to where they could continue operating. Or they would have had to relocate their operations to Indiana when it would have been easier for Thor to just use an existing brand convert the name over and then release that product out of Indiana, but with different materials, with a different level of quality and craftsmanship. So hope that all makes sense. I mean, I, I am definitely shocked by it. I did not expect this to happen, especially considering the fact that we reviewed one of their top end units for six months and it was beautiful and it was absolutely fantastic. So to see the brand end up closing its doors, uh, you know, it's, it's really sad. Um, anyways, leave a comment below. I'd love to know how you all feel about this, uh, what you guys think about the news, and if this impacts you at all, if you have a Van Lee product and what you plan on doing. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.